This is going to be the next episode of Deep and Secret Things. And I received a question about angels in an email. So this is a question and answer at the same time. But first off, I wanted to show you in Genesis 18 a story about Abraham and when three angelic beings appeared to him. And the question has to do with, are angels sexless? Do angels have wings? Are angels blonde women? Are angels uh, cute little babies? As you know, you see in the pictures and the little figurines that people have sitting on their shelves. But does the Bible teach that angels are sexless? But here you have the story of Abraham in Genesis 18. And look at what it calls them. Look at Genesis 18, 1 and 2. It says, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself to the ground. So the Lord and angels appear to Abraham, and it says three men stood by him. The reason I can't just go along with the teaching that angels are sexless is because it calls them men. So how do you get sexless out of that? So the angels that appeared are called men. And the average Christian would believe. The average Christian, if you walk up to them and ask them about angels, they would believe angels are female, blonde, with long feathery wings, or little naked babies with wings, like in their mother-in-law's picture frames. That's not so intimidating as you see the angels are when they show up. The last one is a little bit creepy, though, especially if your mother-in-law is like mine and has uh, pictures of naked babies with wings on her living room wall. That's a little strange. When men see angels in the Bible, they are intimidated many times, and it makes sense they would look like a healthy young man because they're in t people are in fear when they show up in the Scriptures. I mean, it's obviously not a good-looking blonde woman appearing to them in the scriptures, as you see in the movies and on the commercials and in the uh, pictures. Consider the story of the angels coming to Sodom and Gomorrah, even in the very next chapter in Genesis 19.1. It says, And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Now go down... A few verses and you see that the men of Sodom have been watching a little too much Brokeback Mountain. They have been influenced by their their day's version of Little Nas X or Elton John or Pee Wee Herman or Boy George or something. They've been influenced. They've been having some evil communication because these men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. It says in Genesis thirteen thirteen, they were sexual perverts. And they wanted the angels. So they came to Lot in verse 5. And it says, And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. So these men are angels. And these the men of Sodom wanted the angels. Now the Sodomites called them men. And they want to know them. That is, know them sexually. So if the angels are good-looking blondes with blue eyes and tan skin, I doubt this is going to appeal to these people who have this perverted sexual orientation, as they call it. I don't see the angels coming out of Lot's house saying not to call them men. I don't see the angels coming out and say, don't call us by what we are. I mean, they weren't non-binary. They weren't standing up for gender queer rights. To them, the rainbow stood for God's token of the covenant with Noah and not priding oneself in being a lover of perverted pleasure. When they went to buy some clothes, uh, they saw a men's section and a women's section. They saw a stick man on one bathroom and a stick woman with a skirt on the other bathroom. They weren't confused about what they were. They were not sexless. The Bible says they were men. And I don't believe angels are sexless any more than Demi Lovato is. Angels are men. Demi Lovato is a woman. The Schofield Notes 
Schofield's got a good reference Bible, but he says that angels are sexless. But the text calls them men many times. When Jesus Christ appeared in the Old Testament, he looked like a man with a sword drawn in his hand. In the story in Joshua five thirteen through 15, he was intimidating. He was a, a man. In jo Joshua five thirteen through 15, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place where on thy standest is holy. And Joshua did so. So Joshua said, Joshua seen a man over there. And when Joshua came down in the, when Jesus Christ came down in the flesh in the New Testament, he is the man, Christ Jesus. Not the it Christ Jesus, not the they Christ Jesus, not the them Christ Jesus. He was not non-binary. He was not gender neutral. If you don't understand what I'm referring to, then let me explain. You see, today the gender neutral crowd doesn't want you to use pronouns like he or she or even shim. Uh, even though you're talking about, you know, they, they want you to call them they, them, it, whatever. And even though you're talking about just one gender gender queer person, just one person, they want to be called they and them. Uh, that is not right. It says from the beginning that God made them male and female, not they, them, and it. Jesus Christ identified as the man Christ Jesus. God said Eve should be called woman. And when Jesus Christ talked to his mama, he said, Woman, what have I to do with thee? In John 2, 4. Uh, you know, he used woman, man, he, she. Jesus refers to people as what they are. Are you more righteous than Jesus? Finding a sexless angel in the Bible as, is as impossible as a man really being a woman, even though he was born with man parts. You can identify the angels as women in the Bible, but that is like a tranny identifying as a real woman. Just because you say it is true doesn't make it true. Don't put a blonde wig on the mighty angels. Don't put glitter on their eyelids. They are men, and they intimidated people in the Bible. In Mark sixteen five, it says, And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. Notice there that angel is called a young man, in Mark 16, 5, in a long white garment, and he put fear in people. He was a man, and they were intimidated by him. He was not a cute little baby with wings, and he was not sexless. Another thing, one of the angels who has a name in the Bible is called a he, Michael. Don't try to take away Michael's manhood. Michael is a he. I don't think he would appreciate you trying to take away his manhood like that. In Daniel 10, 21, it says, But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. When you get to heaven, I dare you to call Michael your princess and see what happens to you. In Jude 9, it says, Yet Michael the archangel, when he contended with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. It said he, referring to Michael, the archangel. He's not a non-binary. He's not a gender neutral. Uh, when Jude got to heaven, I don't think Michael threw his purse down and said, Jude, you know you're supposed to refer to me as they or them or Veronica on the weekends. No, he, he is a he. He was a mighty archangel. He is a mighty archangel. In Revelation 12, 7, there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. The devil is a male as well. You know that song, She's a Devil Woman? That old song that goes, She's a Devil Woman. The devil ain't a woman. There are some unclean spirits in Zechariah called women, but the devil is male. 
He's not gender neutral. An angel is called a man in the scriptures. In Revelation 21, 17, he measured the wall thereof, 140 and 4 cubits according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. While I don't know every detail of what these angels look like, it would be completely unbiblical for me to refer to them as anything other than male. You can't say they are sexless when they are referred to as men. I mean, how could you honestly do that? You're reading through the whole Bible, and every, almost every time it refers to an angel that calls him a man, or a young man, or a he, and yet you're saying I'm unbiblical for saying they're not sexless when the Bible doesn't refer to them as sexless. And you can't make them a cute blonde and wish she was your guardian angel. You can't do that either. It, they're never called a female. I mean, if you believe that, I mean, I guess that's all right. But I, I think that's just wishful thinking for you. But what about angels in heaven versus angels which kept not their first estate? In Matthew twenty two thirty, it says, For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of God in heaven. Based on this verse, many Bible believers will claim that angels are gender neutral. And like I say, many Bible believers. I don't think someone's not a Bible believer just because they think angels are sexless or because they don't think the sons of God are angels in the Old Testament. I don't say they're not Bible believers. They just believe differently than I do on this topic. But based on this Matthew twenty two thirty, many claim that angels are don't have a gender. It, but the verse doesn't say they're sexless. It says they aren't given in marriage. And they don't marry each other because they're all male. And you say, okay, well, that's fair. But this, but this still proves that they couldn't be the sons of God in Genesis 6, who took the daughters of men as wives since they don't marry. But you have to ignore some of the verse to come to that conclusion because Matthew 22.30 shows us that it is the angels of God in heaven which don't marry. What about the ones who left their first estate? In Jude 6, in the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation, he hath reserved an everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. The angels which kept not their first estate are different and the angels that are still on the Lord's side, that's who came down, got with the daughters of men. Also notice, I hope you're looking at me with this in Jude, verse 6, where it says the angels which kept not their first estate, because the very next verse links them with, uh, puts them in the same boat as some people who committed sexual perversion, some fornication which is exactly what the angels did in Genesis 6. The sons of God uh, did something sexually perverted. God was not for what they did, getting with the daughters of men. Now look what it said in Jude, verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire, the same way that Sodom and Gomorrah did something sex perverted, it had the angels in the same context as that in verse 6 about the angels which kept not their first estate, both linked with fornication. Now, if you look at Second Peter 2, 4, and 5, it says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, those aren't the angels of God in heaven, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved into judgment. Now, watch this. It links it with the flood. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Notice it link in Jude, it links the angels with sexual perversion like fornication. Second Peter 2, it links them with Noah's flood. And in 1 Peter three nineteen and 20, it links them with Noah's flood again. It says, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Angels are spirits. And they're in hell because they sinned, a lot of them, which sometime were disobedient. When? When once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few that is eight souls were saved by water. So the angels, which kept not their first estate, are associated with Noah and his flood, which you read about in Genesis 6-9, through 9, and they are compared to Sodom and Gomorrah and their sexual perversion.
Also, the men of Sodom, remember this, we just talked about it. The men of Sodom wanted to commit fornication with who? With the men who were angels in Genesis 19. But those were the angels that kept not their first estate, you see? Because you have a lot of people that say, well, angels are spirits. They couldn't commit a, uh, a sexual sin with people. Well, those angels in Genesis 19 that came down and appeared to Lot, they ate, they came in and uh, in his house, they physically touched the door, and the men of Sodom wanted to physically know the angels. Just like the sons of God in Genesis 6 physically knew the daughters of men. You see, when you look at things throughout the Bible... You see that things are not so far-fetched. And I know I talk about this topic a lot, but I get a questions about this a lot. People are interested in this. It's just one of those things people are interested in. So I don't just turn away a question just because I've talked about it before because i got a lot of new listeners, and people have this question a lot. And I mean, it's a pretty big doctrine in the Bible you're seeing angels throughout the scriptures. I mean, I just showed you it's talked about in Jude. It's talked about in Second First Peter, Second Peter. It's talked about in Genesis. It's talked about in Daniel. You see it in Psalms, Psalms 82. Just, it's all over the scriptures. It's a pretty big thing in the Bible. But now let's look at the sons of God argument. In Genesis 6, 1 and 2. See, I also had this question. The question was how can the angels, how can the sons of God be angels and marry the daughters of men because Matthew twenty two thirty says they're sexless? That was the question. But I, I done proved to you that they're not sexless and I've proved to you that they could commit fornication and the people of Sodom wanted to commit fornication with them. But in Genesis 6, 2, it says that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And that's where the giants came about. And of course, we are sons of God today. And I'm not saying that we're not sons of God. Of course we are because we believed on Jesus Christ. Israel was a son of God corporately. Not in, as individuals, but it, the nation of Israel was were uh, sons corporately. Adam was a son of God because he had no earthly father and was made in the image of God. However, in Genesis 6, you don't have Israel. And you don't have born-again Christians from the church. The church age that we're in today. So, it has to be angels. And... Uh, Look at the sons of God in in Job 1, six. It says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Why are the sons of God hanging around with Satan here? If the sons of God are simply saved people, ask yourself this question. We're in Job. If the sons of God are simply saved people, then how are they in the third heaven in the Old Testament? Back then the saints went to the heart of the earth. And I'd say 99% of Bible believers that I know, except for uh, Stephen Anderson and those guys, believe that Old Testament saints went to the heart of the earth in paradise and not to the third heaven. So what are you going to do with this verse? Why are the sons of God in heaven and Satan among them? And then if you're still not convinced after that, I mean, this Job 38 5 through 8 is really the puts the nail in the coffin on the teaching that the sons of God are saved are only referring to saved people in the Old Testament and it, you just really got to twist the scriptures to make this not teach that and it says and who hath laid the measure in Job 38 5 who hath laid the measures thereof if thou knowest or who hath stretched the line upon it whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened who laid the cornerstone thereof when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, who shut up the sea with the doors when it broke forth as if it had issued out of the womb? Here you have the sons of God shouting for joy when God laid the foundations of the earth. 
how could that be saved people when Adam hasn't even been made yet? So you have to believe in humans before Adam if you think sons of God can't refer to angels. Who else are the sons of God here? So this proves that sons of God in the Old Testament certainly refers to angels. And the counterattack to this is they make the cornerstone of verse 6 refer to Jesus Christ when that has nothing to do with the context. So they're saying that this has to do with when when Jesus Christ came down in the flesh and there was rejoicing from the from the sons of God, that has nothing to do with the context. That also makes it look like you're teaching that Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone, just showed up at the creation. And you see what a mess you get into because you're too embarrassed. This is what this is about. You're too prideful and too embarrassed and worried about what people are going to think to teach what the Bible says, all because it's very, very strange. This is why you never want to become a big shot. Just go ahead and let people know how crazy and how much of an idiot you are at the beginning of being a Christian. That way, you don't have to uphold some type of reputation. I mean, I don't have any type of reputation with people. I'm a nobody. Nobody knows who I am, really. I, I really don't care what people think about what I believe. Because the scriptures obviously teach this stuff that I'm saying. I mean, you you have all these people saying that what I'm teaching is wrong, but they never come out with a, a counter video showing how I'm wrong on it. They never give me verses on it. They just simply tell me that I'm wrong and tell me what they believe. They don't show me with the scriptures how I'm, uh, how I'm wrong, other than just using the same scriptures that I used in in the study. For example, Hebrews 1, five for unto... Which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. So they say, see, the Lord never called an angel a son. But they left something out. Angels are sons of God, but they aren't begotten sons. Notice the preciseness of the scripture. So the Lord would never say to an angel, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. That's what he never said to an angel. Because Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son, according to John 3.16. The new Bible changed it to one and only Son. And as we have seen, God has more than one Son. Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son. Angels are sons, but they're not Jesus, so he's not going to say, Thou art my Son, this day have I begotten thee. So you see, Matthew 22.30 and Hebrews 1.5, they had to leave out those little details to prove against what I'm teaching. And also think about if the sons of God are saved men in the Old Testament, why didn't they get on the ark? Wouldn't they have gotten on the ark? I mean, think about these things. It says Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. If those sons of God were, you, you see a lot of people that teach that Son, the, the sons of God were saved people. They also think that people in the Old Testament were born again and in the body of Christ and then and, uh, adopted as into the family of God as sons of God. So wouldn't they have been perfect in their generations as Noah and been able to get on the ark, had a free ticket in there? They didn't even get on the ark. They perished in the flood on the world of the ungodly as it says. So, I mean, if I'm wrong, make make a video like this showing me how I'm wrong. And I'm, I'm open-minded. I'm not one of these people that say, well, I believed everything that I've believed ever since I was saved. I've changed quite a few things, quite a few minor things. And I'm, sh I'm sure you've noticed, if you've been listening to me all this time, you've probably seen where I've changed details about things where I was wrong, ignorantly stupid on stuff. But this is my take on this topic. Are angels sexless with wings? No, they're not sexless. And no, they don't have wings because if they had, if angels were walking around with wings, you couldn't entertain them unawares, as it talks about in Hebrews. There are, uh, Creatures in the Bible with wings, like the cherubim, have four wings. The seraphim have six wings. 
those unclean spirits uh, in the book of Zechariah chapter 5 that our women have wings, but those aren't angels. Those were unclean spirits. And, you know, the the scriptures don't teach the Bible uh, that the angels have wings. It doesn't teach that they're sexless. It doesn't teach that they're good-looking blonde women. It doesn't teach that they're cute little babies. You see, another thing is people want to make all of the uh, creatures in the Bible to be angels. Like they want to make the cherubim to be, to lump them in the same class with the angels. And they want to take the seraphim and lump them in the same class with the angels. And they always just want to be certain that the unclean spirits are fallen angels. Which they could be, but I, I don't, I don't. I personally don't believe that they, the unclean spirits are fallen angels. I think that's a completely separate class of of spirits in the scriptures. But see, when you make them all the same, then you start saying, well, angels have wings. But the angels in the Bible didn't have wings. They looked like a regular man, even though they weren't. They had power to make men go blind. They had power to kill a bunch of people at once. I mean, look at Michael the archangel. He fights the devil in the coming tribulation period. But I hope I answered this question to help this person on this topic. And this is the latest episode of Deep and Secret Things.